Go, my boy. Go. Go. <laughs> Frontier list today we're going over Excalibur and first things first let's go into the builds. So there's a lot to talk about so I apologize if I'm going quickly. The first two builds are a shield gate and a health tank build and these are the two best builds I could personally find on Excalibur. The first build is a Thera Strike build which is very nice on Excalibur due to its low cost and the fact that it's an armor strip ability and it also has a decently fast cast speed. It being a low cost ability allows you to maintain your energy as Excalibur has a very bad energy economy. It armor stripping enemies greatly helps as Excalibur's DPS versus heavily armored enemies such as Eximus or Bombards or Heavy Gunners is actually very poor. And its fast cast speed greatly helps for a shield gate build as Excalibur doesn't really have a great form of CC. As his best CC tool is Radial Howl, which is not only a 50 cost ability, but is also very, very bad. This is one of the worst CC tools in the entire game, and you really shouldn't be using this ability unless you have to be. Uh, with Thera Strike, you can also use Natural Talent on top of Madurai, and this makes this ability absolutely instant, giving you like so much time to DPS enemies. You want a faster ability to make the full use of your shield gate frames as you don't want to be caught in loops as Excalibur of shield gating and then not being able to kill all of the enemies and just having to spam Thera Strike over and over and over again and just getting in loops like that, not killing anything, running out of energy and dying. Uh, if you slot Archon shards, you can drop natural talent and slot something like Stretch if you're doing missions less than an hour for some quality of life range on Thera Strike. If you plan on going past an hour, you can slot Archon Vitality. Uh, sub one hour, and honestly even up to two hours, Archon Vitality does nothing. As you'll see in the video, I'm hitting multiple mills even without it, so there's no point in hitting higher than that as you're still overkilling the enemies. There is one sound, one downside to uh, Thera Strike, and that is it knocks enemies away from you. You can circumvent this in one of two ways. So, you can either prime enemies with your Exalted Blade and then strip them, like this, and instantly kill them, or you can just armor strip them and then bullet jump after them. Notice I say bullet jump after them and not slide after them, and this is because Excalibur has a unique slide melee with his Exalted Blade, which costs 25 energy every time you do it. This is the dumbest mechanic in the entirety of this video game. So you don't want to be sliding melee as you will be losing all of your energy, which is already pretty poor, and you won't get anything out of it, so just try not the melee slide attack as Excalibur. As for the second build, it is a Warcry health tank focus build, and using the mecha set for armor through mecha pulse, and do not underestimate that the AoE damage that the mecha set applies once every 12 seconds when you kill the marked target. It pretty much nukes the entire room in a 30 meter radius. It is actually kind of cracked. Warcry is very, very good as it gives you um, attack speed and armor, which are both nice for your DPS and survivability. And it also, with the augment, lasts forever, which is very nice for your energy economy because, again, Excalibur's energy economy is pretty bad. Uh, with a build like this, it is very good, however, because you aren't really using energy too much. Uh, as for the Arcanes, Arcane Blessing for health and Arcane Ultimatum for even more armor consistently. You can drop this for Arcane Guardian, however it gives 300 less armor. Arcane Ultimatum is not too bad to proc on Excalibur, because you can uh, use your second ability Radial Howl to set up finishers guaranteed. Not only that, but Mercy Kills count as finishers for Arcane Ultimatum, and you want to be Mercy Killing Eximus anyway because A, your DPS is pretty bad versus them, and B, you are going to be using a Parazon with Blood for Energy, and this makes it so whenever you Mercy Kill an Eximus, you get even more energy back. As to the final three builds, I am just going to gloss over them quickly. Nourish was a Health Tank or a Shield Gate build. This was a Shield Gate setup. 
I didn't really like this build as, again, your second ability Radio Howl is pretty bad. Uh, shield Gating with Nourish is kind of useless as it doesn't really do anything. And Shield Gating with Slash Dash is extremely buggy, which I'll talk about later during the survivability section. As for the Lycath's Hunt build, this is a health tank build. This is the tankiest health tank build, but it also does very poor DPS. Depending on the content you're doing though, this build is amazing. Health conversion gives you 1350 flat armor, which you will be able to keep up consistently through the use of Lycast Hunt, giving you infinity health orbs. Uh, that's really all there is to say about this build. And Gloom is another build that you can run as a health tank or a shield gate build. The problem with Gloom is it lowers your KPM a bit as you're slowing enemies, and it also has some sustain problems. As for the rest of the kit, I was using a Cedo to AoE Prime with Viral with the Alt Fire. If you're using Nourish, you can run a Corrosive Cedo to AoE Prime with Corrosive and Viral. My secondary was a Spore Lacer, used to kill the Acolytes as Violence hard counters Excalibur. And without an Armor Strip, your Exalted Blade doesn't really do too much damage to them either, so the Spore Lacer was just to kill Acolytes. Obviously, if you're running a Health Tank build, you run full DPS. If you're running a Shield Gate build, you run Augur Mods if you need the Augur Mods. I was using an Inodem for the 30% sprint speed. You can also use a Prados for the 20% uh, sprint speed, parkour velocity, and sliding velocity. However, I found that the Inodem is actually better in the case of Excalibur, as you don't really want the parkour velocity or the sliding velocity, and you just want raw sprint speed. Do make sure that you do not have any of the Incarnate upgrades that give you combo, counter, gain on uh, slide, or on ammo pickup, as with all Exalted melees, if you gain combo on your main melee, and it runs out while you're on your Exalted melee, you lose all of your combo permanently on your Exalted melee until you've recast it, completely neutering your DPS. As for the Inodem or Prados build, all you do is you just want the Gladiator mods for the crit multiplier on your Exalted weapon. As for Focus Schools, I was using Moderai for the 40% ability strength and 50% casting speed. However, all of the... Uh, Focus schools work, except for Zenerik. Zenerik is useless on Excalibur, as you have a Drain, making all of its abilities useless. As for the Exalted Melee build, I tried a million different Exalted Melee builds, and really none of them stood out, so just use whatever you like the most. This is what I was using on Shieldgate builds and anything that didn't need Healing Return, and this is what I was using on anything that needed Healing Return on the Health Tank builds. As for the Companions, I was using a Panzer with a Synth mod, a single synth mod and pack leader for the lifesteal. And on the health tanks, I was of course using a Roxa Kubra with the mecha mods equipped and protect for resetting your shield gate. Now moving on to the rankings, we're discussing Excalibur in relation to four separate topics. Firstly, his KPM, secondly, his survivability, thirdly, his viability, and finally, how funny is the play. All of this data is sampled from a one hour solo steel path mod run with no specters on call and of course no archon shards. Now let's begin with Excalibur's first topic, his KPM. Now Excalibur's KPM is actually pretty average. Uh, with Therror Strike, you have the potential to scale exceedingly high as First of all, you're running a shield gate build, so you can survive in those levels, but secondly, since you're armor stripping, you do insane damage through not only raw damage, but also heat procs. If you choose to not run the Thera Strike build, and you choose to just use Nourish as a shield gate build, or um, you run a health tank build, like your damage caps out just due to you not armor stripping and him not really actually dealing that much damage, especially versus enemies like um, bombard Eximus or Heavy Gunner Eximus or even just normal Bombards and Heavy Gunners it can take a while to kill them even with priming them uh, but once you add an armor strip he does have very very high damage the other problem is Excalibur as a Warframe gets hard countered by violence as a whole and he also is very annoying to play against versus nullifiers the problem with nullifiers is, as with all exalted melees, if you ever build combo, like I mentioned earlier, so if you ever build combo on your main melee on accident, whenever that combo runs out, it will permanently delete the combo on your exalted weapon until you uh, 
decast your four and then reactivate it and then obviously you have to build your combo back up this means what happens anytime that you get nullified not only do you lose the combo on your four but it also takes you out of your four and since you're playing excalibur all you're doing is spamming e for 99 percent of the mission anyway so you're going to quick melee on accident build up combo and then you have to waste time so now not only do you waste time like having to rebuild up your combo and you're exalted but you also now have to like go out of your way to make sure you lose the combo on your main melee before going back into your exalted the same thing happens with violence because violence gets absolutely hard counter i mean uh, excalibur gets absolutely hard countered by violence which is extremely annoying especially if he purges you not only this excalibur is a warframe who can make use of something like a uh, power drain on the parazon for the 50 percent additional ability strength that will last forever on your exalted blade until you get nullified or if you're using like an everlasting ability like uh like uh gloom or warcry and then once they get purged you have to set all of that back up and not only that if you're running a health tank build and you're not running or if you're running any of those abilities anyway and you're running excalibur umbra then just the simple act of going into your operator will purge those uh abilities like warcry gloom or nourish as he just disables them for literally no reason whatsoever and then that leads you to wanting to play base Excalibur, but base Excalibur is another whole can of worms where you lose a lot of base energy, which you really, really want on Excalibur due to his lackluster energy economy. And he also loses base armor, which is really bad if you're running like a health tank build because uh, you're using Umbral mods for a percentage increase on in your armor, so you just lose armor. I don't know. Like, base Excalibur is worse than Excalibur Umbra, but Excalibur Umbra is also worse than base Excalibur. It's it's kind of stupid, I'll be honest. Like, they really just need to fix all the bugs with Excalibur Umbra. I don't know why they all exist, like, this long into the game. Uh, on top of that, there are the two separate build varieties. Like, you either go Health Tank or Shield Gate. And surprisingly, Health Tank actually gets higher KPM than Shield Gate on Excalibur outside of the Theros uh, Strike build. And the reason is, is because as a health tank build on Excalibur, you just get to run around in melee. You don't have to worry about spam shield getting, which you have to do a lot because of his poor survivability. Spoiler alert. Uh, as the Thera Strike build, though, since you do so much more damage with Thera Strike build, you actually do the same KPM as a health tank build. But if you're running something like a Gloom or a Nora Shield Gate build, you'll actually be doing lower KPM than if you were just running like. A health tank variant of those builds obviously if you're doing high enough level content to where the health tank builds don't work then obviously you have to run the shield gate build anyway uh for all of these reasons i will give him an a minus rank for his kpm because it's not bad and it does have good scaling with arrow strike now moving on to the second topic is survivability and this is where everyone if you've ever played excalibur you know that his survivability is absolutely terrible he has nothing in his kit to allow him to tank enemies. He has no form of DR. His CC is absolutely terrible. I think his second ability is probably the worst CC tool in the entire game. Uh, unironically, Hydroid's abilities are better for survivability than uh, Excalibur's, and it's not even close. So that already is setting a pretty low bar. The other problem is, uh, like I previous me previously mentioned, for a lot of the builds, you really want to be playing Excalibur Umbra, but then you have even less survivability due to his uh, bad base stats. Excalibur Umbra's base stats aren't terrible, but they're still just average. So, like, if you run a health tank build, you're locked into running, like, every single armor mod in the entire game. If you plan on doing, like, even decently long content, like, up to, like, an hour, which... Obviously, most of these other frames that I've ranked, even as running them as a health tank, don't have to do. The closest comparison for a health tank that I can really think of from any of the frames that I've done is either like Lavos, who has better, who has like significantly better survivability than Excalibur, or Styanax, who also has significantly better survivability than Excalibur. So, I'm going to have to rate his like health tank survivability as like a D. Now. 
if I made this video just a couple days prior, I also would have given his shield gate uh, survivability like a D as well. But thankfully, I found a way to make the Pharaoh Strike build work, and the Pharaoh Strike build works amazingly for his survivability. The problem is, as a shield gate build on Excalibur, there are still some issues, namely with Slash Dash. See, you would think Slash Dash would be really good for a survivability because it's a low cost ability that you can spam and it makes you invincible. There are two problems with Slash Dash, and they might be one and the same, I'm not entirely sure. So, with Slash Dash, you become invincible, and obviously you can use it to reset your shield gate. The problem is, enemies can still shoot you while you're invincible, and destroy your shield while you're invincible. So this means, even if it worked properly, uh, you, would have, you wouldn't have the full shield gate time after pressing your 1 and coming out of the invincibility because there's a chance that your shield was destroyed while you were still casting the ability. The other problem comes from a bug, at least I'm assuming it's a bug, where sometimes after pressing slash dash and resetting your shield gate fully and enemies breaking your shield gate while you're still invincible from slash dash, Sometimes you just do not get your shield gate immunity, causing you to instantly die after exiting the slash dash. I do have footage of it, and I don't know how to really include it in this video without extending the video for an unnecessarily long amount of time, so I will just have a separate video showcasing this bug in the description so you have proof other than me just saying it exists. The Ther but once you learn how to play around that and with the Thera Strike build, the survivability is at least decent. And obviously some people will say, well, if you just do the slide melee attack that you made fun of earlier, his survivability is... No, it's terrible. That ability sucks, and whenever you use the slide melee, it uh, it's an even... It's a nerfed version of the ability that already does nothing. It just... It, and it doesn't even reset your shield gate. It just consumes energy micro stuns the enemy for enemies for a millisecond and doesn't even like give you shields based on the energy that it consumes like it just it's bad it's so bad uh so i will give his overall survivability a c minus and it's entirely carried by the pharaoh strike build actually being like okay now moving on to the third topic his viability and his viability is also not amazing but it's not bad you can play him in pretty much any mission, I just would please do not play him in defense type missions, like defense or excavation, he is entirely useless there, and I think he's mostly useless in disruption. I I'm not sure if there's a way to make him work there, I, I honestly didn't test it, so I'll just like, I'll just say he is like 50-50, he might work in disruption, he might not. Uh, odds are he probably doesn't, I don't know. Uh, but... In the rest of the game modes, he's okay. Like, he's not bad, actually. Like, you can run through an Exterminator's Excalibur. Like, it would work. It would be fine. Like, same with Survival. Uh, even in group settings, it would be fine. So, like, his viability is just, like, average. So, I'll give him, like, a B- minus there. Now, moving on to his fun. And this is a bit polarizing. If you plan on doing Excalibur and extended missions, I think he is probably the most unfun Warframe in the entirety of the game. Now on the flip side, if you're playing Excalibur and just like quick, like, I don't know, like 5 to 20 minute missions at the most, he's actually pretty fun. Uh, the problem if you play Excalibur too much, especially like in a single mission, like an hour long like, he just gets extremely boring because you're just running around mashing your E key. And not only that, but it also gets painful after a while. Uh, kind of like the Valkyr Syndrome, but honestly even worse. But in, like, micro doses of, like, 5 to 20 minutes, it's honestly pretty fun and pretty different than uh, what you would otherwise be doing on the game. So I would give his fun rank also, like, an average, like, in-between rank of a B. In conclusion, Excalibur is a B- tier Warframe. He's pretty average, with decently high KPM and some scaling potential, but lacks in the survivability department. Unfortunately, Excalibur falls under the trap as most of the low B to C and D tier Warframes, where they are either riddled with bugs or have a lot of interactions that just leave you scratching your head and wondering why they were designed in such a bad way. 
Excalibur unfortunately suffers from both bugs and questionable design decisions. Also, one last thing, big shout out to today's video sponsor, the E key on my keyboard. I could not have done these 20 plus hours of in-game MOT missions as Excalibur if it, was, if it weren't for my E key holding out the entire time.